welcome to a brand new series of the FarmEd podcast. I'm Kate Henderson, Agricultural Lead at FarmEd. And I'm Danielle Zempel, the Public Engagement Coordinator here at FarmEd. And we'll also be hearing from Ian Wilkinson, FarmEd Founder and Director. And our resident storyteller and copywriter, Fiona Mountain. So we've got a great lineup of speakers um, coming up who we hope you'll find really interesting. So everything from micro dairies and joint ventures to composting and our arable rotation. So if you're interested, which we know many of you will be, um, in listening to our podcast on your favourite podcasting medium. So Kate, before we delve in, do you want to introduce yourself, um, how you came into this amazing world of food and farming and yeah, a bit of your backstory, I guess. Yes, yeah, so I'm Kate and I'm the agricultural lead here at FarmEd. Um, I've always wanted to be a farmer ever since I can remember, so I haven't quite got there yet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, both my parents grew up in, on farms, neither of them inherited their family farm. Um, but I was very fortunate that my grandfather actually wrote a book about farming. Mm -hmm. And it was back in the 1940s, um, but I first read it when I was 12. I think I've read mm -hmm. it about five times now. <laughs> um, and it really inspired me. It was called The Farming Ladder and it's how he got into farming. and. Um, basically the way he did mixed farming so um, and the main sort of aim at the heart of it was keeping the soil well in good hearts he called mm -hmm. it so improving the soil and then from that you can improve everything else so yeah one day you never know I might get my dream and become a, a real life farmer but um, at the moment I work here and I get to meet so many amazing and inspiring people. Mm. So I guess from what you read when you were 12 when it was mixed farming with your grandfather you've also had a slight career in farming and working on farms itself so you've kind of seen you've read and then seen different sides of farming so ha has that been a shock to you or interesting or you've kind of seen the full diversity of what's what's going on yeah so i went to i did a degree in agriculture at half radams and then i worked on farms in um so worked on a dairy farm in cumbria worked out in new zealand for a while and then i worked on a large arable estate in oxfordshire um so it's all been brilliant experiences complete um so diverse sort of ends of the farming spectrum. Um, so I've seen how you can produce things on a really like um, high volume, quite intensive system, and then at the opposite end of the spectrum, sort of more diverse, mixed, um, small scale. Yeah. So all of them um, really interesting. And what we're doing here at FarmEd is brilliant because again, we get to meet so many different people from around the country. Yeah, it's kind of, you've gone full circle. You've learned a bit and now you're teaching other people. <laughs> yes, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> if you can't do it, teach it. Yeah, um, exactly. So Danielle, your um, sort of entrance into farming <laughs> um, has been rather different. Yes, slightly unusual. Um, I guess my main way in was through earthworms, which is quite an unconventional way of getting into food and farming. Um, I studied geography at the University of Exeter, but um, I've always been fascinated with how the human and physical side of geography connect and how they relate to each other. And for me, food is essentially that biggest interplay between human and physical, just because you know we've all got to eat. Um, food comes from nature. We have to look after nature to better produce food for then us to thrive and have you know economies and social um, social communities. So yeah, we're really really reliant on food and. If we can produce it better with nature, with less um, less chemicals, for me that's just you know it's what I would love. I just I love it so much, and I just I'm so obsessed with it. Um, but I guess my way into farming was through my dissertation at uni. I studied how earthworms can better improve the soil health and therefore the crops um, in 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 the soil um, naturally because you know they are nature's plow. They produce. The earthworm, their poo, is so rich in nutrients, it's kind of like a free fertiliser. So I was fascinated and hooked on, why aren't we using earthworms? Or why aren't earthworms talked about more when, you know, bumblebees and insects? There's a lot of discussion around them. Um, so, yeah, that and I basically, I live locally, so as all uni grads, I've moved back home with my parents, um, but got in touch with Ian, who um, obviously is the co-founder of FarmEd. So, um, yeah, that really... I, he was just fascinated <laughs> why I was so obsessed with earthworms um, and yeah I just kind of set off from there really and just learning so much and unlike you who did a uh, agricultural degree I've just learned on the go really and I think it's amazing how much I still feel like I have to learn um, because it's such an it's an evolving world evolving space um, that's really hard to <laughs> keep on top of. Mm. There's new changes every week, every day. Um, but yeah, it's a really inspiring place. And I think if it was the same, it would be boring yeah. to work in. <laughs> yeah. 
And actually, we're um, just designing a course at the moment, aren't we, on mm. like an introduction to agriculture. So again, for people that maybe haven't got a background in agriculture, but just want to find out a bit more. Yeah. Um, so I think that should be really interesting. Mm. And uh, has there been anything that sort of, um, since you've come into this sort of, into the agricultural world, that has surprised you? Any questions you thought might have oh. been a bit... <laughs> so many questions. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I read books and podcasts, but it's also the discussions you have with people that come to Farm Ed. Um, everyone has an amazing story and obviously not everyone's story can be captured. So just trying to get the network built and, you know, learning from others, I think is a really important part of building that knowledge and education. Um, if I'd say there's a few, like, standout uh, facts and, you know, things that happen in the farming season is um, probably, like, it's, it's quite hard. <laughs> it's not easy just to, you know, for a consumer, it's really easy to walk into a supermarket and food's there. But for farmers, you know, there's a lot of pressure on them. Um, the timings are critical. And obviously with climate change, um, last year and this year being an example of two complete you know, diverse ends of um, the spectrum with weather. Um, it's yeah, just been a bit of a roller coaster learning about um, the timings of everything. And you know, you might think you're having a great year until one week can ruin your whole harvest, and that's your income. Yeah. Um, so it's really hard. Um, but also, I mean, I know you've been having conversations with people about the history of farming and how that's evolved, and that obviously links with your grandfather. Yeah. Um, and I know you were um, really fascinated by the Partition Act and all of the things in the landscape that we can see now. So I don't know if you want to... Yeah, so, um, I mean, I've done a degree in agriculture. I'd worked in agriculture quite a while, obviously brought up in that sort of environment. Um, but it was only a few weeks ago, actually, on a course we're running here, that I really learned about... Um, more about like ridge and furrow and how you can tell if it's been uh, if it's made by oxen or by horse so you can tell the age of it um, mm -hmm. yeah the enclosures act and how that all worked and when hedgerows are formed and um, land ownership how that's evolved over the years um, yeah so that's something we're definitely going to go through in the course I think because it just shows when you look at what's happened over the centuries and also the subsidies how mm -hmm. that's really affected land use and how the landscape looks because that's a big topic of conversation now for mm. farmers, but the fact that there's been a whole history of it, can we learn from that yeah. in the past? Um, and also there's the um, the types of agriculture. You know, now we're kind of defining and putting principles behind agriculture that perhaps we didn't before because it just was agriculture. So mm. it's a really diverse space. Um, and I think the more you start learning, it's quite addictive. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And again, talking to people, the more different people we can talk to, um, we've got to understand the context as well. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying, this is right, this is wrong. There's so many nuances. Everyone's farm is different. Everyone's situation is different. Um, so, yeah, it's great to just hear from people around the country and what they're doing and um, what's happening because of that. Yeah. Yeah. And because there's so many buzzwords that are hard, <laughs> to, hard to learn. And people, you know, we're, we're probably um, uh, susceptible to just like saying these words that no one else really understands so yeah that course will be really helpful to define regenerative agriculture yeah. precision agriculture things like agroecology things that we think are really common but mm -hmm. not many people know at all what it's about and the actual implications yeah of them as well on nature and humans and yeah all of those great things yeah and also i'm really excited about um some of the other courses we're starting to do so like how to set up a joint venture how to set up a market garden like actually getting the people in who are doing it, who are making mm. it work, so we can help other people on the farming ladder, I suppose, just to get on that <laughs> first rung and see what they yeah. need to do to start these things. Because I think now we're at such an exciting point in food and farming that, you know, the trajectory, we, we've already started, the, the, the ball's rolling, and we just want to help as many people who have that seed, if you pardon the pun of the mm. idea. Yeah. They, we want to kind of plant the seed um, and really help them establish and flourish, uh, flourish because we know we can't, solve all the issues we're only we're quite a small farm mm. but the fact that we can bring people here and they then they can take a bit of farm ed with them they can take what they've learned and um, implement all of the wonderful things that are already happening but we need we just need the momentum to keep growing really so yeah having these introductory courses are great starting points and baselining almost um to get more people involved because you know with the podcast on careers in agroecology you know there's me having earthworms is my way in. Mm. I never ever thought, you know, you have those career talks at school, like I wanted to be an artist, but now kind of looking back and reflecting, it's such an interesting way. There's always a unique way in um, that can be really, really strange. But yeah. if it works for you, it works for you. Um, so hopefully, yeah, we can provide some of that on our, 
our courses and just by talking with other experts that we're bringing in with our podcasts too. Yeah, I mean, and just um, showing that farming and the food and farming sector Mm. is such an amazing place to be. I mean, when I was at school, again, I said I wanted to be a farmer. I wanted to go to university to do farming. And I was I was at a rural school, but I still got laughed at by my tutor. Wow. Um, <laughs> he was like, why do you need to go to university mm. to learn how to chew a bit of straw, I think were his exact words. Oh. But now I think um, a lot of people are realising actually what an important role it has to play. Um, so I think, yeah, there's definitely hope in the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, and farmers is a great place to be. We bring a lot of a lot of guest key guest speakers in that are kind of the um, pioneers or the change makers in their industry. And again, that peer to peer knowledge transfer is so crucial mm. because it, you know it, I don't. There's um, I think it's roughly seventy two percent of the UK is farmed. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot of people that are involved in farming. So if if each person had their own story to tell, or they do have their own story mm. to tell there would be an awful lot of stuff to read and learn. So yeah it's, yeah, it's just trying to share that knowledge and pass it on to make some positive change. And learning from mistakes. Yes. And what's worked well. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> so we don't make the same ones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, if you're keen to go back and listen to the previous podcast that I featured on as a guest speaker, um, it's funny now I work here. At yeah. the time, time of recording, I didn't actually work here when I recorded the Earthworm podcast. But even now... I know some of the things I said weren't very accurate, and I, mm. like, but I was supposedly, you know, researching earthworms. That was my full time, and that was my passion. But now, again, I've learned so much more, mm-hmm. um, just because, again, the space is evolving, and you get to talk to more people. Your network keeps building. So yeah, again, you think you might be at the, the top of your game, and then another thing will come along, and it will, yeah, yeah you'll learn more. Um, which is, again, it's part of why food and farming is so exciting. Yeah, and it's constantly evolving. And I think, again, going back to the point of doing these intro podcasts, is to give a taster mm. um, and then you can get, yeah, we can sort of go on and keep learning, keep exploring. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in a couple of years' time, we might be saying <laughs> that more research will have come out, we'll, found, we'll have made more mistakes, found yeah. out more things. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I hope that you've enjoyed us talking about the intros to the intros. Um, stay tuned for more introductory podcasts and we look forward to welcoming you back soon.